Hello fellow Hordes of the Blue and welcome to my channel and welcome to the first time I've decided to give a video a second try. This is a more modern version of one of my first videos and one of the videos I was at the time most proud of. The problem is that obviously because the channel was tiny back then, the video got very few views and rightly so as the quality was <laughs> atrocious especially compared to what I do nowadays. So I always had that little thorn in my side because I really believe the video deserves way more views and with the release of the Orwald, I knew I had to give it another try. The only thing not featured in this video is the metal trim on the shield. But if you want to know how I painted it, I have a video right now in my Patreon on how to paint an amazing Bretonian TMM steel armor, which is the same recipe I used here. The link is in the description. So, thanks to Gage Workshop for sending me this new slash old Bretonian box and let's get cracking. As you can see, we're heading from base coat of Chaos Black Spray. And the first thing we have to do is create our heraldy pattern. In this case, I'm just going to go for the box art of the New Bretonians, and that means quartered black and red. And to base coat the red, I'm going to use Mephiston Red. It doesn't have to be perfect, because we are going to correct back the black later, but it's good to be as precise as possible. Remember, we as humans are much better doing lines vertical than horizontal. So turn around and do just that. You see, we have our cross there. And now I'm going to fill in the red quarters. Again, we will fix that back later with black. So don't obsess over it. Just do a nice base coat till we have a solid color red, which is going to take about three layers of this Mephiston red thinned down. With our nice layer of Mephiston red finish, I also clean up the black. You don't need to do it at this stage, just be clear about that, but I want to do it just so it looks better on the video. I want to shade it, and for this I'm going to follow the recipe of the heavy metal team that was published in the Warhammer community page, and that is a mix of one part Mephiston red and one part Incubi darkness. I'm going to thin this down into a heavy glaze consistency and use this to, first of all, mark the divisions of the panels. I want to have four panels across of wood. So I'm going to start here in the middle and mark this also more or less in the middle of this square here, just like that. You, we don't need to be super thin with this because we are going back to Mephiston red in a bit. This is just to mark where the panel should be. And we are also going to use this same mix with this same consistency to shade this towards the edges. We want to create a vignetting effect with this. So we want the outside perimeter of the shield to be darker. This way we are going to create depth. All of this is adding, will add three dimensionality to the shield. The best thing about this is we don't need to be super precise with this because we're going to paint the wood effect on top of this. If the glazes are not perfect, it doesn't matter. Once our passes with the glaze of Mephiston and Incubate Darkness is dry, it looks really, really good. And going back to Mephiston Red again, thinning this down to a heavy glaze consistency. So we want this to be quite transparent just like that. And what I'm going to do is first of all, thin down these panel lines. And also start building the wood pattern. Just like that doing thin lines, they will be quite hard to see at this point because well Mephiston red and the underlying colors are not too dissimilar but it's important we start adding them right now just like that 
with the lines now done, I'm going to move into the next stage of highlighting. This is Evilson Scarlet, and it's just the process of doing exactly the same. But this time, I'm going to concentrate them towards the center of the shield more. Just like that, you see, I'm starting a little bit lower down and more concentrated towards the middle of the shield. And to do the other quarter, it's much, much easier if you start upside down. As I said before, it's so much easier to do vertical lines than it is to do horizontal lines, but it's also easier if the lines go from top to bottom. With that highlight done, we're going to move into the next stage of highlighting. This is Wild Rider Red. And this step is exactly the same, but taking less and less area as we go. The next stage of highlighting is a water one mix of Wild Rider Red and Tau Light Ochre. As I said before, we are each time taking less and less space and trying to do finer lines as we approach the center of the shield and reducing our highlight area as we get away from it. Don't be afraid of going a little bit over the line, because as I said before, we're going to clean the black just at the end. And for the final highlight on the red, I'm going to use pure Tau Light Ochre. And as you can see, I'm doing more in the center and less and less as we move away from it. And that is the red done. And now we just have to clean up all of the little mistakes with some black and take this time to perfect the quarter ring of the shield. So it looks as good as possible. With the red finished, time to move into the black. And for the black, we can do the same process. Well, you can, but it looks better if we start just from black and move upwards. It's easier and it looks just as good. So we're going to start with Corbus Black. And with Corbus Black, what I'm going to do is define the whole panels. So not just doing like lines, I'm actually painting in the whole of the wood panels with Corbus Black. But I'm leaving a little bit of the black on the edges, just like that. I'm also leaving the separation between the wood panels pure black. For our next step, I'm going to go to etching gray. As again, I'm just following the heavy metal recipe here. And I'm going to define the panels better, starting with doing the main lines between panels, just like that, so we have a better separation. We need to go right up to the red but without touching it, which can be a little bit delicate. Next, I'm just going to start painting the wood veins. Remember, they have to match at the bottom. So you have to continue the pattern you draw with the red. Otherwise, the wood is not going to look realistic enough. With that done, we're going to move into the next stage of highlighting. This is a storm burning fur. And as we did before, we are concentrating this more towards the middle of the shield. Remember, the lines have to meet up 
with the red ones and they have to make sense. Now for the final step on the black, I'm just going to use Administratum Grey. You can use an intermediate step between the, the Administratum and the Stormbird Infer if you don't feel confident. But if you have control, you can just move straight up to Administratum without any issues. And there you go, this is the wood effect, and if you're just painting men at arms or something basic, you can basically stop here and call it a day. But because this is for a night, I want to add the heraldry itself. So for this I'm just going to use some decals. If you want to know how to apply decals, I will leave a video linked in the top right corner. And with the decal applied and varnished over, now we can paint an integrated more into our shield and for this I'm going to first recreate the wood pattern very subtly using Grief Charger Grey. You can use whatever greys you want, I just find Grief Charger Grey works so good for this job. I'm also going to shade the decal towards the bottom just to, you know, integrate it more into the general shape, trying to reproduce the vignetting effect on the decal as well. And now I'm just going to take pure white and do the, the main veins of the wood. Now it feels way more integrated and we're going to give it even more depth with some scratches. And for this I'm going to go for the red bit with a mix of one part Mephiston Red and one part Evil Sun Scarlet. We try to do micro uh, scratches on the white decal, sort of like that. If some of them get a bit too big we can always go back with the white and refine them. I'm going to just use Corvus Black for the black parts. What a cool effect that is, I genuinely love how it turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did remaking it. I still think it's one of my coolest ideas ever and I hope you integrate it in your armies. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media, you have the links to all my social media in the description below and in the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people access to many more exclusive painting videos and private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. Help me enjoy the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Dodge Howell, Ben Ben, Jacob, Mateusz Babiuk, Andrei Mishenko, Tristan Lavo, Adam Miller, Jake Staines, Matthew Needles, Stefan Zimmerman, Giugiale, Andrew Walden, Tom, Dr. Mike, Martin Reverua, Sheshua, PJM, David Rady, Matt Wallace, Cross24, Robert McMillan, Corey Hoffman, Mac Carter, Hendrik Mansonian, Thomas Knut, Chester Ross, Mark Griffiths, Tyler Hughes, Chris Gilroy, Spicy Joy, Ossie Bestlife, Mark Watson, Hamish Donald, Matthew Lang, Luz Manuel Toca Oria, Inigo Garcia, Stavros Stavro, Kelly Richard, Shinji Wo, Meg Regueira, Romain, Ars Miniatura, James Brand, Dan Sex 92, Jazz Rex, Joe Offwood, Dr. Cathaber, 
Angelo Alex So, Alastis, Rainer Hochbark, Mark Bellingcup, Felix Franke, Aaron Bernstein, Stefan Franiati, Daniel Ramin, Bolsi, Phil Wahlberg, Terry Denham, Plutch, Tony, Biom, Howard Holtwell, Stefan Yol, Nick Demao, Robert Smith, Painting Peter, Stephen Rockford, Roger Nilsson, Oscar Jonathan Thunberg, Min Guyen, Dan Mako, Cristalios, Kevin Mian, Darcy Forar, Natius Maximus, Aaron Dell, Javi Mota, Eamon Patton, Dan Thaxon, Gareth Smith, Heather Armstead, Mark Arkinson, Mark Jarvis, John Simpson, Christoph Moret, G4, Dr. B, Bartolo Mikahusa, Lenar Lindemann, Kirino Murthel, and Kevin Sullers. And as for me, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.